Welcome, my friends. You're listening to the voice of the Eternal Gospel, a program brought to you by the Eternal Gospel Ministry, founded in 1992 by Seventh day Adventist believers. This is a Christian program dedicated to bring you the prophetic fulfillment, warning, and revelations of the end times, and to promote the advancement of Christ in your life. Welcome again, my friends, to the voice of the eternal gospel. I'm Pastor Rafael Perez, and I'm inviting you to pray with us. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your holy words, and help us, O oh Lord, to be guided unto salvation. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 I, in the last program, I remember that I have to catch you off, you want to talk to us about, to all of us, about there is some power. Yes. But, uh, I mean, you talk about uh, uh, Romans 1, 15 and 16, no, not, well, we're the gonna, power we, of the we, gospel. We're going we're to talk about that, but what okay. I want you to see is that character uh -huh. always comes before power. And God rains down character by his Holy Spirit that we can develop character first. Mm. You see, in the great controversy, Lucifer had the character at one time, mm. but he turned aside from wanting the character of God to desire and covet after the power of God. If mm. he had not done that, he would have still been in heaven. But he no longer wanted to reflect God's character. Mm. He wants the power without the character. Without the character, right. That, we have to be careful with that. There you go. Right, and right. so we find that this is the case here. But now what we're going to see, though, we're going to find out that character is the Holy Ghost comes down to bring you character that he might give you power. You see, God doesn't want to give you power without character because you will misuse the power. But if he gives you character first with power and you are in fear of God and you, you love God, he, will, he can trust you to use the power correctly because you you're going to have the right character. That's why he can't give you immortality as a believer unless you're taking on his character. Mm. Otherwise, you would bring rebellion if he let you in heaven without with, with just you believing and you don't have the character. If he let you in heaven, the rebellion will break out again. Right. So God has to be sure through the investigation of records that you have the spirit of God can bear witness that this person, not you, that spirit Holy Ghost can bear witness that this person has character right they have the character of christ now he's he's he he or she is ready for immortality we can trust him with the power to live forever amen Praise you Lord. understand this this is what we're talking about but in order but but in order, prior to that time the precursor is that god must give us rain down he's gonna give us rain and that rain carries with it character which is from the holy ghost and then it's the holy ghost going to give us power but the power will come as we seek to daily put on the character. Amen. How do we know this to be true? Let's yeah, take a look. You want to say something? Okay, yes. Go ahead. Say yeah. Well, I was just going to say it takes God's power to develop that character because yes. through the everlasting gospel, which mm -hmm. is the power of God unto salvation. Well, that's why Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. Right. But I want to know, does the Holy Ghost give you this now? Let's take a look at this. What, the, what is this power for, though? Is this power for you to just sit down and say, I got it now. Nobody else got it. Mm -hmm. Is that what it's for? Yeah, and, and it's another God's thing power that we, for selfish purposes. Right. Mm -hmm. Another thing that we should be thinking about: Can Satan also give power to us? Satan can give you power, but you'll never have sweet the character of love and faith. Yes, of course. Obviously, in Revelation 13, it says that the dragon gave power to some institutions, okay. to a, a very popular religious institution. But now, the, go with, it's very clear. Go with me to Acts chapter uh, yeah. five, verse. We have 32. to be careful. Acts what? Go me to Acts 5.32 because I want to show you that yeah. what the Holy Spirit is giving you power for, first of all. Right. Acts 5.32. Or to whom is the Holy Spirit, yet to whom he is giving power. He's going to give Holy yeah. Spirit, he's going to give right. power to somebody. Watch yeah, this. go ahead. And we are his witnesses of these things, and so also is the Holy Ghost whom God hath given to them that obey him. Now God right. gives the Holy Spirit to them that what? Obey him. Obey him. Right. Luke eleven thirteen 13 said, if you didn't be evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more should Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to them that ask him? So those that ask God for power, for obedience. Mm -hmm. Now, obedience unto what now? Go to Romans 6, 16. 
Romans chapter 6, six verse 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of to sin, of sin unto death or of obedience, obedience unto, unto, what, unto what? Righteousness. righteousness. So righteousness. the fruits of the Spirit is righteousness. Amen. The Holy Spirit comes down to give you power for obedience unto righteousness. Wow. Okay. That's, that's beautiful. Okay. That's right. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we hear quite the opposite because we got the Holy Spirit because we got God, Christ Christ grace in our life, then I don't have to obey the Lord of God anymore. Mm -hmm. It's the opposite. It's the opposite. Because we get the power from the Holy Spirit, because we get the grace of Jesus Christ and able us to do what? To, to obey God. To obey God. That, that's right. That's the beautiful truth that you just read, my brother. And this is not legal. And that's and this, is, this is not legalism. No, this is of course. the true aspect of being born again and becoming a new creature created after Christ Jesus unto good works. Wow, yeah. this, that's good. This is justification by faith. This is uh, living by faith and claiming God's exceeding great and precious promises that by these we might be partakers of, of the divine. divine. Right. Right. Demonstrating, demonstrating that by God's grace, we can pass through this time of the judgment. Yes. That we can prove that God's commandments are righteous, are perfect, holy, and can be just, holy, just uh, and good. Uh, as Paul says, right. seven twelve, Romans That's seven right. twelve. That's right. I think it's that. That's right. Can you read it, please? I think it's Romans seven twelve. Romans seven twelve. So, yes. Wherefore the law is yeah. holy, and right. the commandment holy, just, mm -hmm. and good. Amen. So when we go to First Corinthians one thirty, and we said that righteousness, Jesus is our wisdom, righteousness. Right, Jesus, when that text, when we use that text, that text is dealing with him being, him, Jesus is our wisdom, is our righteousness, our sanctification, and redemption. And righteousness is his character here mm -hmm. that we're talking about. And that's why it says in Philippians 3, 5, 3, 8, it says what? And being found in him, mm -hmm. not having my own righteousness, which is of the what? The law, but that which is through the faith of Jesus Christ, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith. Amen. All right, so now... Chapter 3, verse 9. 3, verse 9. 3, yeah, three 9. Thank you so much. All right, so now, as we look at that, so Jesus is our what? Righteousness. Mm -hmm. For the development of what? Character. Character. All right? So the rain will come down. First of all, the early rain is coming down to help us develop what? Character. Character. All right, now... Can Along with giving us power to obey and keep God's commandments. Amen. That verse, uh, Philippians 3, verse 9, is very mm -hmm. important, it seems mm -hmm. to me. Uh, Paul says, And be found in him not having my own righteousness, which is of the, of the law. law. Which is legalism at that time, which was the Judaism, Judaizing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. trying, trying to do it in our own strength. strength. Right. But that which is through the faith of Christ, that mm -hmm. the, righteous, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Mm hmm and so the, uh, the law is still there, but it's reached by Jesus Christ. We're accepting now this, Christ this, and his righteousness. This is, where, this is where you have the righteousness of God without the law, okay, being revealed. Uh, but Romans chapter 3. Yes. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest being witnessed by the law and the prophets. What is this righteousness of God that's without the law that's being revealed? Because the law itself is righteousness. So what is this righteousness of God without the law that's going to be revealed that will give you the power to keep God's law and walk in righteousness? Even the righteousness of God, which right. is by faith of Jesus Christ. Ah, it's the righteousness of God, which is by faith in Jesus Christ. Right. Verse but 22. now, and, okay, now watch this, though. What, 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 where do you find this righteousness of God on Jesus Christ, without the law being revealed, where is it found? By in what agency is it found in? Because that agency tells you how the righteousness of God is revealed without the law. Witnessed by the law and the prophets. Witnessed by law and the prophets. Law and the prophets. Okay, you got that one. But now we take you to go back to Romans one seventeen. Right. For I am not ashamed, ashamed of the, the gospel, gospel yeah. of Christ, for it is the power mm -hmm. of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth. Right. To Jew first, also to Greek. It says, "For therein is the what right. the righteousness, righteousness of God." Of God Reveal. Is that what it says? Yeah, reveal. Righteous God reveal. So wait a minute. The gospel 
reveal, the gospel of Jesus Christ reveals the righteousness of God without the law being made manifest. Are you with me now? With, by witnesses and by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness which is, of, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. Mm. So we find that the righteousness of God can be revealed without the law, but the, does not negate the law. Through the gospel of Jesus Christ, we receive of the righteousness of God because Christ is our righteousness. Right. And, and, and he is the, and without him, it's impossible for us to keep God's commandments. It, it is an impossible. It's an impossibility. It, 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 I mean, That's we right. can try but that will be legalism. That's right. It, it, it will not be accepted before God. Mm -hmm. Right? It's an impossible. That's what Paul says. That's right. Now uh -huh. watch this. With whom is set forth, verse 25, talking about the righteousness of God, being justified freely by his, by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. That's why Paul would say, 1 Corinthians 1 30 said, Jesus Christ is our what? It says here, but of, ye, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and what? Redemption. Amen. Notice this, all in Christ Jesus, it says here, with whom God has set forth to be what? The perpetuation through what? Now, through what? What do we have, Patrick? What verse are we Verse on? 25. Romans 3, 25. Through whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith. Through faith. Now, wait a minute. So yeah. how will you receive this righteousness of God through the gospel that you hear? Mm. Through faith. So faith cometh by Hearing. hearing and hearing by the word of, word of God. God. So only through the hearing the word of God preached to you and you accept the gospel of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and you accept that by faith. Can you be can you please have experienced the righteousness of God, which is by faith in Jesus Christ? Amen. Then you can become a true child of God. Yes. The, 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 the new birth experience is not going to be just in the mind. Something that I can just say. I'm I a believe Christian. it's I'm not a new born. No. Right. It will be demonstrated by that character that comes with the righteous, with the with gospel. The God, with, through the gospel, right. through the righteousness of God. That un will enable me, by faith, to obey Jesus' his law. Now, his why, ten commandments. now, watch this. So, what is this thing that's coming in you now uh -huh. when you accept Jesus Christ that is going to help you experience the righteousness of God? What is it that helps you experience it? Now, you, you accepted Jesus' death on the cross by faith. Amen. But now you said, Lord, take possession of my heart. I yield myself to thee. Mm -hmm. Now, what's going to happen? Paul says, being what now? Born again. You're born again by faith. You're not born again by feeling. You're not born again by music. You're not born again because so you accepted it by faith. Amen. Through grace are you saved. Amen. Are you with me now? And mm -hmm. you accepted that by faith. And now watch what happened to you now. Mm -hmm. This is not forensic justification. Mm -hmm. This is justification by faith. Mm -hmm. Are you with me now? Look mm -hmm. what it says. Who it says, verse 25 again, read that for us again, Patrick. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. Through faith in his what? Blood. Blood. Let's okay. point you back to the what? Death on the cross. Yes. Can you hold it okay. right there? We'll be right back. Paul and Jesus both predict that the Church of God becomes a force against God. The radical faith that Jesus taught had become the official religion of the empire that murdered him. The speed with which the early church tobogganed into apostasy will take your breath away. Find out what the critics are raving about. Top scholars and theologians from around the country come together to reveal the hidden history of the Book of Revelation. With powerful reenactments and incredible visual effects, this 95-minute masterpiece brings to life the Book of Revelation like never before. Revelation is no longer a mystery. Get your copy today.
Welcome back. Welcome back. All right. Let's go ahead now. Yeah. So we found out that Christ is through Christ's righteousness, right? Mm -hmm. But he is perpetuated for our sins. But now we're born again. So this is not forensic justification mm -hmm. where you just believe. No, this is you being receiving of Christ through, the, through his death on the cross. This is why it's talking about through faith in his blood. Your faith in his blood is his sacrifice in your behalf. Amen. And you being and you humbling down your heart before God and yielding your will and your mind and heart to God. Yes. yes. Blood, blood has the power not only to cleanse the body of impurities, but it gives nourishment and to the to the body. So strength and power. That's right. And, so and, through and, Jesus. And, and, and you know, when we realize what that beauty of the gospel, the least uh, when I say that Jesus is doing all for me, he died for me. He gave his Holy Spirit to me. He giving his grace to me. He enabled me to uh, come into obedience with him. The least, the least that I can do is just say, yes, Jesus, let me obey you. Let me walk after the, your commandments because you show me first that you love me even when I was your enemy. Yes. I mean, so what I'm trying to say is the true principle of obedience it's not to gain our salvation. No. Because that will be legal, legalism. It is because by God's grace, we have been saved. There is a big difference, right? Mm -hmm. So so I'm going to walk in obedience, including the fourth commandment, the seventh day Sabbath, because I want to return in love. I want to show in love yes. that what, what he's saying what he's saying to me in his word can be done in my life. Yes. He's saying, I want to enable you to keep from falling. Isn't that what Jude 24 says? Not in him that's able to keep you from falling. That's right. Isn't that present what it says? you faultless before his throne. Right. Can, can, no, can you say it slowly so people can understand it? Jude 24. 24. Okay. Now unto him. Right. that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. In Philippians 4, 13, I'm sure you can say it slowly. I can say it in my original Spanish language. You can say it, come on. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. I can do how many things? All things. All the, including walking on his obedience of the Ten Commandments. Yeah. Not because of me, it's because who is in me? Okay? I know I'm, I'm a wicked, wretched, wretched uh, person. But Christ in me, the hope of glory. Yes. The hope that, I, yes, be, like Jesus said in John 15, I love, I keep the commandment of my Father because I, I love Him. Yes. It's in love. Yes, yes go ahead. And... Enoch walked with God, and you use that word too, walking with Jesus. Right. And Jesus, and so we keep the Sabbath because Jesus is keeping the Sabbath. Amen. We're walking with him, and he's... he's uh, as simple as it is. <laughs> when somebody read to me Luke chapter 4, verse 16, for the first time in my life that I read it, Luke chapter somebody 4, read verse 16. 4, 16, yeah. that said that Jesus went to the synagogue Every Sabbath, mm -hmm. what what did I do? Like a, like a little kid, I was twenty two years old. I said, <laughs> I want to look for a synagogue because I want to go. I want to be like Jesus. Yeah, you see, what I mean? if you want to be like Jesus, do what Jesus did. That's simple it is, right? Yeah. Now, because yeah, <laughs> let me just read verse right. eighteen. Okay, uh, <laughs> the spirit he, when Jesus was there, and yeah. in verse eighteen, he says, "The spirit of the Lord is upon me." Therefore, he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. That was his day. That's it. The seventh day Sabbath. Okay. Now, right. the, thing okay, I, the thing I wanted you to see is that justification by faith mm -hmm. is an experience of you being born again mm -hmm. and receiving of the righteousness of Christ. Mm -hmm. When you receive it, you receive the imputed righteousness of Christ, which when you accept Christ and you accept him as your Lord and Savior, by faith, your sins of your past can be forgiven by his blood. Amen. Are you with me now? This is what it says in verse 25 when it says, Romans 25 when it says, to be the perpetuation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God, to declare, I say, that this time 
his righteousness, that he might be, the just, be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Yeah, and, now, and I will mm -hmm. say, from what we have been quoting over here, mm -hmm. more than receiving the forgiving of our sins, yes. but to give us power. Well, that was, that's where we were going next. We are just doing the first of our justification is forgiveness of, the past, of sins of the past. And then you have that's imputed to you by faith in Jesus Christ when you're born again. But then also God imparts righteousness to you on a daily basis for power to obey as you receive fresh drafts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As you, by faith, we have a living connection or walking with God on a daily basis, moment Amen. by moment, even hour by hour. But Amen. we should not take our mind, once we are born again, we are Amen. walking with Jesus. We, should not, we cannot afford to take our mind off of God even for a moment. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and that's a beautiful. Can I illustrate it quickly? Yes, go ahead. In mm -hmm. a simple, in my simple mind. Okay. This is the way I, I, I thought I want to think about it. it. Let's say an avocado. We have a lot of avocado around here where this tape is being, program is being taped at this time in Florida. Right? Avocado trees. An avocado tree. Give the fruit of avocado. Why? Mm -hmm. it's because avocado. because it is an avocado, avocado tree. tree. Right. Mm -hmm. The avocado tree doesn't have to say, let me see if I can give uh, uh, banana or apple. No, no. It will bear the fruit of what he is. Mm -hmm. The same thing with a Christian. When we come to Christ, when the, the grace of Christ comes into our heart, the fruit, I don't say it, Paul says, the fruit of the Spirit will sing in our life. And one of those fruits is what? Righteousness. Yes. Is that not true? Yes, because, the, because of the fact that the law of a seed, since mm -hmm. you brought up avocado, yeah. the law of a seed is to produce after its kind. Yeah. Jesus was the promised seed of Genesis 3.15. Mm -hmm. It says, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. Mm -hmm. So the seed of the woman was Christ. Right. And Abraham says in Galatians 3.16, and he said, not his seeds as many, but thy seed, meaning Christ. Mm -hmm. Christ is the seed, right? right? And Christ says, when the sower went to sow, he said the seed was the what? Word of God. Christ Amen. was also the word of God. Mm -hmm. So the seed of God's truth mm -hmm. was sowed in every believer. Right. Now, when God, Jesus comes to investigate, mm -hmm. to find out who has the fruit, the judgment. who has the actual <laughs> character right. who's been de in developed in the process of right. when you put that avocado seed in the ground right. or you put a cucumber seed in the ground right. when you get ready for your harvest right. all you're looking for is a cucumber right. you're not looking for <laughs> carrots in the cucumber patch right. all right? right you're looking for cucumbers right? right now you must understand that at every point right. of development of that cucumber right. whether it be this big in that garden right. or whether it be this small in that garden right. The cucumber has all the same nutrients mm -hmm. that the, the small one has all the same nutrients right. and characteristics as the big one. It just haven't fully grown to full size yet. Mm -hmm. So whether it be looking kind of young still right. or Wrong. fully matured, right. the cucumber has the characteristics and nutritional value of the cucumber, oh, right? right. Mm -hmm. So when Jesus investigates, He's looking to see whether you've been in church a long time or whether you've been in church a short time, whether you've been in him a short time or a long time. He's looking to see is the fruits of the spirit of the nutritional elements in your character Amen. that even if you were, even if you didn't get a chance to get to this full mature cucumber, mm -hmm. did, were you were you in the process of through purification? Were you in the process through sunlight and fresh, and water? Righteousness and the, and the Holy Ghost, where you are in the process of developing to the maturity of the right. full cucumber. Amen. Amen. And he will pick the cucumber, whether it was young sometime or whether it's mature, because both of them have one thing in common. Amen. They have the character. They have the qualities of the nutrition of the cucumber. They have the qualities and nutrition of Christ-like righteousness. Amen. In their lives. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's Come on, let, let's move on. That's what you were talking about the cucumber, move, so that's why you know you don't want okay. to up. So we have, so we, <laughs> okay. so we have to talk about it. But, yeah. but I want you to see. So, so now we see that the righteousness of God is this power Amen. that the Holy Ghost has given us, right? Mm. So now watch this. Let's go. Look, now that we got that aspect down, so Jesus is our righteousness. But now, what else is righteousness? Now, now that we know that for a fact, go to Psalms one nineteen one twenty three. It says. 
Mine eyes? Mine eyes fail for thy salvation and for the word of thy righteousness. So wait a minute, what's righteousness there? The word. The word of God is also righteousness at this point. So did you notice that? The yeah. word of God is also righteousness. So Jesus is righteousness and is dealing with a character. The word of God is dealing with righteousness because it's going to deal with what? It gives instruction in what? Righteousness, righteousness. which is doctrine. Are you with me now? So God is raining down character through the Holy Ghost. God is going to rain down the understanding of doctrine. All right? But that doctrine is going to carry righteousness by faith. All right? We want you to see that. All right? Now, the Bible says something else, though. What else is God? What else is righteousness? We found out in Psalms 119, 172. What you got? Oh, yes. All thy commandments are righteous. So God is going to rain down the Holy Ghost for a character. The Holy Ghost to give us understanding and teach us and guides in all truth concerning doctrine. And then he's going to give us the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost has given us the power because we are born again and partakers of his righteousness, imputed and imparted. He's given us power now to be in obedience to the commandments of God. Amen. Therefore, God says he's going to, he says, the Bible says, uh, sow to yourselves in what? Hosea 10, 12. What's it say now? Go back to Hosea 10, 12 so you can see the point with me right quick. Hosea 10, 12 says this right here. Look what it says now. Sow to yourselves in what? Righteousness. 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 Reap in what? Mercy. Break up the fallow ground till it's, till it's time to seek the Lord. How are you going to get this righteousness? Till he come. How, how are we all going to get it? And rain righteousness We've got to seek you. the Lord though, right? Amen. Till he what? Till he comes and does what? Rain what? Righteousness. This is the you. time of refreshing Amen. that Peter is talking about in Acts 3, 19. Amen. That Repent we read before. therefore and be converted that, you, that, that, you, that, you, that what? That your sins may be blotted out. When the times are refreshing, or when the times when God will rain righteousness down Amen. upon you. Amen. I mean, yes, Padre, you have 15 seconds. Hosea 6, verse 1, Come and let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn and he will heal right. us. Verse 3, Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. His going forth is prepared as the morning. He shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and the former rain upon the earth. And re refreshing deals with rain. Right. Amen. I promise we'll pick up this such an important topic on the next program, same station, same hour. In the meantime, God bless you all. Is a promise worth sharing, but we know. Our Voice of the Eternal Gospel family thanks you for joining us. Generous contributors like you keep us broadcasting. Prayerfully consider supporting this ministry. Donations are tax deductible and can be sent to Voice of the Eternal Gospel, P.O. Box 15138, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33416. Our phone number is 1-866-7th-DAY-2. That's 1-866-784-3292. And our web address is voiceoftheeternalgospel.com.